Hi there, this is Mike Anderson, and uh, I am going to show you today how to create one of these Teflon uh, caps that we use in, in our oxalic acid uh, vaporizer gun. And uh, first of all, on our previous uh, video, I showed you step-by-step uh, -step procedures on how to make one of these uh, oxalic uh, acid guns. And uh, this is the first one that I made. And this is the one that in my video I showed you how to make. Now the difference that I had, I made uh, a couple of modifications on this one compared to the one I made previous in the fact that this little heat sink what I did on this one here on that one back there was that I put this uh, where the uh, uh, where the uh, uh, little sensor uh, goes uh, thermal coupling couldn't think of that where the thermal coupling on the other one I stuck it down here like that and uh, then I just set this sleeve on top of it, the coupling. Well, on this one here, I flipped this thread around and I drilled a hole right in there and I slid that up in there like so. And then I threaded the, and then I, with that hole there, I was able to screw that. And what I thought that would do was uh, that would give a more accurate temperature uh, since the thermal coupling was closer to where the uh, uh, acid, uh, oxalic acid is dropped into. So I thought it'd be a little more accurate that way. And I also what I did was I didn't have it flush underneath here. I had it set out about an inch or, or about an eighth of an inch or so. And what I did was I soldered right around there to make it airtight around that, yet I kept it, I, I gave that extra little amount of space there so I wouldn't get a bunch of solder down here on this flat surface. So, because uh, uh, you want it to set on the other portion of that larger inch and a quarter uh, flush bushing. And so I wanted a nice smooth surface for that so that heat transfer would take effect. And uh, that seemed to work out well. And what I did then was there was a little where I drilled that hole and put that thermal coupling in. I ended up using uh, some of this uh, silicone, high tip silicone around that so there wouldn't be no leakage. And uh, now I'm ready to try it again and see how well it works. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. But uh, tonight we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna show you how to make one of these, and this is all stuff that you can get at the hardware store. Uh, you don't have to uh, order anything, and uh, they seem to work well. What I do is I I went to Ace Hardware and I picked up these little uh, wooden uh, drawer pools, and they they had two different sizes. They got uh, I think this was like a an inch. This one is, uh, yeah, it looks like about it, an uh, inch and three quarter wide, and this one is about two inches wide. And uh, so uh, I got two different sizes. Now this one that I made, it was uh, this size, the smaller size, but I'm beginning to think that this uh, larger one might work a little better but uh, what I do is I got a uh, now these will work well on my uh, little deals because I only have a one inch uh, cylinder here so uh, if you make one of mine well this works just fine so, but uh, if you have if you make one that's uh, got a larger uh, ID on it 
well then you might need a uh, you might need a, a larger uh, you know well this one would work probably still yet the larger pull knob but anyway I get a uh, three quarter inch cap for copper tubing cap and I drill a little hole right in the center of it to support a screw and then I take and I run this across the bandsaw and cut this off this little portion right here that's sticking up and I try to cut it and get it near flush and uh, then what I do is I mount this onto that with the and I drive it, pour a little screw down through there clamp it on there and then I take a number 18 o-ring or seal well that's what this is and I wrap that it'll just fit right over this cap just like that and this will be mounted on there like that and then I take some of this Teflon tape just like that and now the the o-ring is up against the back side of this real good good and firm and then I just roll this around here and I put it in a tapered uh, position I'm, you know I just I work it up there and then I slowly work it down but I put more up on this end to give it a tapered uh, appearance there and uh, then what I do is I just take some uh, super glue and I just smear it around there a little bit and let it set and dry and uh, I, I put enough of that Teflon tape every so often I'll go in and check it and see how snug it is I want it nice and snug in there and uh, the, if it don't have enough I'll put more on it until I get it the, to the way that I want it and uh, I got that right there that's good and snug and uh, but uh, it seems to work well and it uh, you don't have to spend 20 bucks on a I don't know a, this right here I think cost me about two dollars and a plug uh, cap probably cost me a dollar and a half o-ring uh, I just had a slew of those there's probably 50 cents for one of these and uh, Teflon tape you can buy a whole roll of this for about probably two bucks so uh, it, uh, and they seem to work, work fine and uh, when I put my uh, oxalic acid in in my deal, I don't I don't normally flip this thing upside down and and put it in there like that and then do it like that. I just normally take it and fill this up, stick that in the hole like that, and then just it's packed in there. It ain't going anywhere. And I just put it in there and give it a little tap like that, and poof, there it goes. So. Uh, I just don't think it's needed to set and do that flipping upside down and everything. So anyway, that's that. And uh, uh, I hope uh, this has been a good little uh, lesson for you. And I hope it saved you some, some money. Thank you very much. Bye.